Well, good morning, friends. My name is Clint. I'm one of the pastors at the Duluth Vineyard. And thank you so much for joining us for our morning devotions as we continue to press into the book of Philippians. Today, I'm sitting here in our worship pastor Ace's office. And I got to tell you, friends, this is a nice office. Like I could get used to being in this space. But today, we're going to continue to press into Philippians. We're going to be in chapter 4 verses 1, 2, and 3. So why don't we read that together now? Starting in verse 1, the Apostle Paul writes, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with you, Dia, and I plead with Sintichi, to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women, since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the Book of Life. Now, part of the reason that Paul wrote this letter was to address some of the conflict that was going on in the church. And we don't really see Paul too often use uh, use names, especially uh, in, in like a kind of a, a negative context. He'll, he'll send greetings to people, but he doesn't call out bad stuff using names. Uh, but here he does. Here he calls out the conflict between Udiah and Sintichi, and he pleads with them to be in unity. And it is so much so that he even asks uh, this person that he refers to as his true companion to help them work through it. So yesterday we talked about how important conflict resolution is, to, uh, is in this verse. Um, but today I want to I wanna look at something that Paul doesn't do. Now, Paul, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't judge or criticize or condemn Udaya or Sintichi. He doesn't say, Udaya, how dare you? Or Sintichi, how could you stir up conflict? No, he doesn't do any of that. Instead, he calls for unity. Um, and uh, that, that phrase where I said that Paul doesn't judge people, I feel like I hear that come up a lot, especially with um, a lot of the young people that I work with as uh, one of the youth pastors here on staff. I hear uh, people say, don't judge me. And to be fair, uh, Jesus, he did say in Matthew 7, verse 1, he says, do not judge or you too will be judged. But I think that uh, Jesus, what he's, what he's not saying there is that we can or should unplug our brains and uh, not think about moral things, uh, in fact, I'd say that there's other parts of Scripture where Jesus encourages us to make value judgments and moral judgments. So I think a better way, um, and like uh, if you look at the, the context of those verses, a better way to say it is don't condemn. Like it's not our job to condemn people. It's not our job. Um, another word would be uh, to 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 criticize. It's not our job to be hypercritical of people, to tear into them, to cut them down. And friends, we're living in a very critical society where people can be condemned for uh, a single mistake that happened years and years and years ago. Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of cancel culture, where if, uh, if you fall on the wrong side of criticism, um, society can just cancel you. And nothing that you ever did or said or will say or will do is relevant anymore because you've been canceled. Well, as followers of Jesus, we're not called to cancel each other. We're not called to cancel people at all. Uh, we're not called to condemn. What we're called to do is love and foster unity. Now, don't hear me say that there's never going to be a time when you have when when uh when you have to point out the error in somebody's ways. That very well might happen today. Today, somebody could come and point out the error in your ways. That's a loving thing to do, but we have to do it in a respectful, loving way that brings unity. Like, it's okay to point out somebody's flaws. It's not okay to make them feel condemned. Like, our job is not to condemn. Our job is to build up. So imagine with me, like, what if we get this right? How amazing would it be if uh, we can go to somebody uh, with uh, and point something out that, that they're in error of and they feel loved and valued. And instead of that bringing division, 
that brings unity. That's what we're called to do. Love people and bring unity. So if somebody comes to you today uh, and points out a flaw, what would it look like to receive that and respond in a loving way? If you have to point out somebody's flaw today, how can you do that in a loving way that brings unity? We're going to need the Holy Spirit's help, but man, it's going to be worth it. All right, friends, have a wonderful rest of your morning, and I will see you tomorrow. God bless.